Hey guys, it's me, Mavic Jack 24 here, and today I'm going to be reacting to Oversimplified uh, Hitler's Wife Part 2, which ain't good. Ain't good, and also, and also, yes, and all the copyright does belong to Oversimplified, and let's begin this reaction. Since I've been up interrupted by this so many times before I even got a chance to properly finish the video, I actually got close my first attempt here, but that didn't work. I got close to my second attempt there. That did not work. So let's begin. Now I've been having problems with my computer lately. So go on, load. Perfect. Since Germany's military had to be reduced, Hitler could no longer remain a soldier after the war. But he well, that's not even good news. If he remained a soldier in the German army, army there wouldn't have been really, he just remained a soldier, then think about it. He would almost have no desire to sort of leave it, to leave it, and at best, at best he wouldn't even think of, of mainly joining a political party. To working for the army as an informant. After the war, communists in Germany had attempted a revolution and the government was worried about communism in general. So Hitler was tasked with infiltrating and reporting on any new political parties that could pose a communist threat. A new party called the German Workers' Party threw up a whole bunch of red flags, so Hitler went along to one of their meetings, but found that they weren't communist at all. No, no, they're even worse. They're fascist. No, wait. Yeah, yeah, both of them are bad. They're bad. Fascism is, is not good, I mean... I mean, it does work in a few places, but not really with the racism, no. It doesn't work with racism, no. It doesn't work with the work hours. It doesn't even work work with Italy, which was sure to probably shine with it. At least their trains were always on time. But still, fascism is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. You were extreme right and shared many of his extreme beliefs, so he left the army and signed up to join the party. His fantastic speaking abilities impressed the party's leadership and supporters, and he very quickly rose to the top. He decided the party needed a makeover, so he renamed it to the National Socialist German Workers' Party, or Na And it doesn't make sense why he calls it a nationalist. Yeah, no, it now it makes sense as I don't speak German, so this probably wouldn't make better sense. But this is a ter terrifying party name, as it will be the thing that would come to haunt Germany. Germany and slightly a tiny bit of Austria is Austria is where is where it was from For short and he gave it a new color scheme and that flag would be the thing that that scared over, That scared pretty much everyone the Nazis weren't very specific on policy But Hitler made extravagant promises to return Germany to its former glory by undoing the Treaty of Versailles and reuniting all ethnic Germans into one nation Ooh, that that's still a highly inaccurate map. If you're thinking about this, this is the map from World War One. I. I mean, yes, Edward did have plans on wanting to see this through, through when he was a child to have it more like this. But for the most part, this area is an, is owned by the French after World War, after World War One. This mountain range here in the Alps and this part is controlled by Italy now. This is where Liechtenstein and where Austria are. That's where Czechia and Slovakia are. And I I want to say Hungary is right there. I I could be wrong about that. And there but for the most part, really that that this guy really did come and haunt Germany. Germany even more than than what World War One did also said that only pure Aryan people should be allowed to be citizens, and that old Jews would lose their citizenship. Also, this is why most people hate him, is he favors... Don't, don't find us racist. He favors Aryans, which are pure Germans, Germans, and over Jews, which he boys are the scum and traitors. And don't get me wrong, there's been many multiple dictators who've hated Jews. And that, that does include Stalin. Stalin will get him back to him. Him back back to 
in in my second World War II video. These ideas were already common in extreme right politics, but what set the Nazis apart was Hitler himself, and they quickly became the leading party on the extreme right. Many of the political parties in Germany at the time had paramilitary wings, and the Nazis were no different. Hitler set up the very descriptive whole protection detachment, later- Meeting all protection de detachment? Why does that sound something like you would find in a school? I, I kid you not, if you go to a school, you're gonna have a whole protection detachment, but that does sound like something you would get in a school. It doesn't make sense why you would change it. To the very delightful gymnastic and sports division. Why, why would you change it to the gymnastics and sport division? Are you just trying, trying to make it sound peaceful, or are you trying to make it sound more, more like, all right, I got school ideas. I got a meeting hall protection. I got, I got gymnastics and sport division. How about I stop with the storm? Finally settling on the ominous storm detachment, or SA for short. Their job was to defend Nazi party meetings and intimidate political opponents. And they would frequently engage in battles with communists on the streets. Since the yeah, good enough fight. I mean, they were bad, but let's face it. Let's face it. What? Could be worse, a communist Germany or a fascist Germany? Probably both. Nazis had demanded a reduction in Germany's military size. Many trained soldiers were left unemployed. They liked the Nazi ideology, and it was only natural for them to join the SA, which grew larger and larger over time. The new democratic government that formed after World War I was pretty weak and ineffective. In order to pay reparations to the Allies, it started printing more money. The and that ain't good because printing money only lowers and devalues your your current currency unless you share a currency, which would lower the same currency currency and would be unfair to our countries that use the currency. The problem is that printing money doesn't actually give a country more money, it just makes money less valuable. So as the country printed more and more money, it became worth less and less, and the currency crashed. In 1919, one US dollar was worth about four German marks. By December 1923, one US dollar was equal to 4.2 trillion marks. Alright, so if you have, so if you went to Germany in 1923, and you traded in one dollar, you got all those marks, you pretty much saved those marks, marks, Marks up in a storage unit, and then you wait until, then you wait until after the Cold War, Cold War has mainly ended, and when, and you go back to Eastern, no, you go to West Germany, you go there, and you're rich. I mean, I mean, it might not work like that, but an overall simple view is the way on how I see it. You ready to train in one dollar and you get that much mark and then the German economy goes back up and then you go back have that money it's pretty much good spare spare in the bank I'm not sure if I'm getting that right but but at the same time I I didn't study e economics so I don't know I, don't know, I suppose to know of bread rose to 200 billion marks. Banknotes became worthless. Unsurprisingly, in such an economic crisis, Germany struggled to pay the Allies. The French were pissed about this, so they occupied the Ruhr, an area full of factories, and took the economic output from the area as payment. They treated the German civilians badly, and in total, approximately 130 Germans were killed during the occupation. Germans were furious, and Hitler and the Nazis thought that now would be a great time to lead a revolution. In November 1923, inspired by something a certain bolt. Yeah, I'm sorry, Benito Mussolini. You were the first fascist dictator, and wanted to. How do I say this nicely? The not really strong leader of any of the Axis nations. You literally got in trouble with the British more than once. You literally lost to Greece. To Greece, when you tried invading from the Albanian front which was a very stupid front to even try to invade from. Um, even a person with common sense knows not to invade from a mountain and rocky field side, side when you could just go by sea. Sea. And really, and really, really, you didn't do a good job on really running your country militarily during the Second World War. Plus, you died from being, being, un, from being too, too unpopular, so... And you were hung by a by a meat hook. So yeah.
Italian man did a year earlier, Hitler stormed a meeting at a beer hall and called for an uprising against the government. With his supporters, he marched on the streets of Munich, hoping the police would join his side. They did And they did not. And plus, he was the only one that didn't actually get injured or shot that night. He literally ran for his life. He did not go to jail on that night, but he did go to jail later. The key difference is he did go to jail for doing that, but but he wasn't caught the night. He was just caught for like around the day afterwards. Hitler was put on trial for treason. He could have been sentenced to life, but the right wing judges thought he was a pretty cool guy. Hitler knew that. Oh no. They they could have done. They could have saved the world. They could have saved the world from another crisis. If these judges were not supportive of Hitler, oh, I bet they would have gave him the smackdown. Smackdown, that would have been so good. Hitler not becoming the German leader, millions of people wouldn't have died. Died. Dying Stalin's war against the Baltics in Finland wouldn't have that really happened. It may be to the... No, wait, no, not really for the Finns. Not really for the Baltics. He only occupied the Baltics and parts of Finland due to due to the fact that he saw he saw Germany wanting to invade, so he wanted to get a lot more space on it in France. Which which worked in the long term, but that only really nearly killed his nation. Thought he was a pretty cool guy. Hitler knew the judges and knew that they would be lenient, so he took the opportunity to make impassioned speeches during the trial. And in the end, he was sentenced to just five years in prison, of which he only served five months. And in that time, he wrote a book called Mein, mein Kampf, which is now illegal in German. In German, because it literally translates to my suffrage, and it's written by one of Germany's most hated, hated, hated. Person ever. He served nine months, and when I say prison, it was more like a pleasant hotel stay where he had plenty of time to write a book. And this is a very racist and very bad book. And I mean, really, my console is one of the few reasons Stalin almost did not sign a non aggression pact with, with, with Edward. Stalin did read my Kampf a few couple of times. On, and he did understand what it was basically about, and he did know that German Germany did hated, hated, hated the Soviet Union and communism in general. So Stalin made a pretty good deal with him, and then, and then when, and he and Stalin thought that Hitler would to be that dumb to invade to fight war on two fronts. After he kicked the French out, it turns out Hitler was that dumb to do that. The whole affair was covered by the media nationwide, and it made... Alright, this this very good German newspaper, April 1st. Oh wait, this is a prank. Oh no, he's just going to copy and paste it. Alright, so pretty much angry man. Hates a lot of people. Will publishing this help, help a hateful, a spread of hateful ideology? Who cares? They're famous. Hitler and his extreme message were now known throughout Germany, but the everyday Germans still didn't care much for him. In the 1928 election, the Nazis only won about 2% of the vote. Many only if they stayed that way forever, that would have been better. Still intimidated by all the violence and the shouting and how unpolitician like he was, but a new economic crisis would change all of that. To it's called the I believe it's called the Great Depression. Germany its reparations. America agreed to give it loans. In October 1929, the Wall Street crash happened, and which led to the Great Depression. America wanted its money back. The oh yeah, and you and you don't want and you don't want uh, America angry at you because they will go and ask for their money back. The strain this put on an already struggling Germany was severe. Unemployment skyrocketed. Poverty was widespread, and Germans were sick of it. It was clear that the newly formed democracy wasn't working. In the face of crisis, Germans began moving to the political extremes. If you were German and wanted to change, your choices now were either the communists or the Nazis. Hitler claimed that he was the only one who could return Germany to its former glory. The Nazi party used propaganda to make Hitler seem like a great and powerful man, and even though he was a horrible, horrible, horrible man, gave the German people a scapegoat to blame for all their suffering. How come the Jews are always the scapegoats for everything? Like, I'm not joking, I'm partially Jewish. 
And I know that most of Jewish history is literally blame something and then blame the Jews. I, I know that. It's take over Israel. Every few countries want to take over Israel. Israel, and then the then uh, terrorist groups blame the Jews. The Nazis blame the Jews. Literally almost, literally almost any major party Ernie hates the Jews. It ain't good. It ain't good. The promise of a single strong dictator was a breath of fresh air for Germans after years of failing democracy. Some bought into his extreme ideology. Some didn't agree with the racism, but were willing to vote for him anyway. Many didn't know much about politics at all, but just got caught up in the hype. Election after election, the Nazis became more and more popular, until in 1932, they became the biggest party in the German parliament. Hitler came to truly believe that he was some sort of great, destined savior of Germany. Well, long story short, due to... Due to him partially being mentally blind after World War I, Pretty much a German doctor decided in order to, an experimental hypnosis to try and bring him back so he can see, see physically, and said that he was destined to be German's great savior. Little did that doctor know that he was about to create, create a killer, killer known to history as one of the worst people out to ever exist. He turned megalomaniac. He decided to run for president and did surprisingly well but still lost to the extremely popular World War One general, Paul von Hindenburg. And yes, this is the guy, guy who the Hindenburg ship is named after. And yes, he's got a better mustache, so that did happen. Since he was now the leader of the biggest party, though, he demanded President Hindenburg make him chancellor. But Hindenburg was reluctant, seeing that Hitler was clearly such a big racist. Industry well, I mean, I mean, in all fairness, Fairness, it was the choice of Hindenburg not to make a kid or a chance for until you sort of tricked into it. You want a simple explanation? Then listen to this. Leaders urged Hindenburg to give Hitler the chancellorship, fearing the rising support for communism, and leader of the Center Party von Papen, who had been secretly negotiating with Hitler, said to Hindenburg, how about we make Hitler Chancellor on the condition that I get to be Vice Chancellor and most government jobs go to us moderate conservatives? That way, I'll get to keep my power. I mean, we'll get to keep our power. See? See? This is why you don't trust our hungry people. They, they try to make it sound like you'll get partially get to keep the power when in fact they keep the power. We'll control Hitler like he's our angry little puppet. What could possibly go wrong? As it turned out... Well, everything. Everything. Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in January 1933, but he was not yet a dictator. In February, the German parliament building was set on fire. Historians still aren't sure who did it, and many suspect the Nazis did it themselves. Uh, yeah, that, that's true. Uh, no one, yeah, it's still hard to know on who actually did it. I believe personally it was the Nazis. Hitler blamed the communists, and he convinced President Hindenburg to sign an emergency decree allowing him to imprison all communists and other political opponents. Communists and others were sent off to the first concentration camp in Dachau. At this eh, that ain't good. the elderly President Hindenburg passed away, giving Hitler the perfect opportunity. He introduced a law to Parliament that would allow him to make all future laws and decisions entirely on his own. With his political opponents in prison and the SA intimidating others, Hitler's law passed. Just two months after becoming Chancellor, Hitler was now a dictator. And, and he would continue that until the end of his life, which was a very fatal and dumb part on his decision on fighting war to France. He still had one problem. The leader of the SA wanted the SA to take over the job of the regular German army, and the German army didn't like that idea. Hitler needed to maintain the support of his professionally trained German army, more so than his rough and rowdy SA. <coughs> so I'm not kidding, I actually studied that, and and that's semi-true. Semi-true, not not exactly true in the necessary ways on how to show, but that is, in, for the most part, slightly true. In June 1934, he had Rom and many other of his own SA officers rounded up and murdered. 
while he was this was known as the Knight of the Long Knives, if I'm not mistaken. He took the opportunity to brutally settle some personal scores as well. Politicians who had disagreed with him in the past, reporters who had printed negative articles about him, one guy who did absolutely nothing, but they thought he was someone else. In some cases, even their families were murdered. In total, up to 200 people were killed in what became known as the Knight of the Long Knives. The army, now satisfied that they wouldn't be replaced, pledged total allegiance to their new Führer, and Hitler's control was now absolute. Life in Germany changed violently. Freedom of the press, expression, and public assembly were suspended. Jews were initially branded, and their business... And this is where he... This is where Hitler sort of made Germany... I don't know what can, what can feel more bad towards its history. Is this is the part where the Germans were proud of during the time, and now they're just sort of sort of feeling bad at the fact that their history did that, did that, and they were proud of doing it during the time. It's boycotted, and eventually Hitler would go on to have six million Jewish men, women, and children killed in concentration camps. And it's only about half. Half of all people that died in concentration camps. The other ones were gays, communists, and and um, and anyone with a physical or mental disability. Yeah, it, it gets a lot darker than that in the Holocaust. Hundreds of thousands of people were forced into sterilization for physical and mental imperfections. And that that is true. It's sad, but but that ain't good. Hitler Youth became a way to brainwash the young. Boys were trained to fight and returned home from camp violent. Girls were told their purpose was to have many pure Aryan children, and they would sometimes return from camp pregnant. Oh no, I bet I bet their fathers were pissed. When their parents were understandably horrified, their children would threaten to turn them over to the Gestapo for standing in the way of Germany's greatness. The standard greeting changed, and you could be sent to No, no that ain't good because well, you don't really want to say that phrase anymore, or otherwise you might get your butt kicked. By butt, I mean you might get your your living organs literally kicked, kicked around, and you might as well, well agree that you should not have said that. Concentration camp for not using it. This way, it seemed like everyone was a Nazi supporter. If you dared oppose Hitler, or speak out against him in any way, you also would be sent to a concentration camp. German nationalism captivated the young Adolf. Extreme ideology and anti-Semitism festered in him as a young man living a hard life on the streets. Germany's defeat in the First World War filled him with hatred and a thirst for vengeance. A political movement that treated him like a god and hundreds of thousands looking up to him as their savior made him a megalomaniac. And soon, his aggressive foreign policies would drag the world into a second tragic global conflict, otherwise known as Yeah, that tragedy was was very, very bad. And for both, this went through out a couple of things that sort of gave us. No, I don't. No, I don't want to say that. Well, I mean, it gave it gave a few countries more the motivations. If the United States didn't enter in the world, in the Second World War, which would by Germany anyways, that that wouldn't. Like the United States would not have gone into war in Ger in Germany, let's say, let's say at first they were mainly mainly going to war with Japan, and then Germany for no reason a few days later declared war on America, which at the time they underestimated America's power in fighting a war on two fronts, which which right away did shock them, and then they realized. Realized that Dunkirk, that the British and Americans were working together. And that was it. As I will be reacting to Oversimplified World War II very shortly. Very shortly, but for now, you would have to wait until the end of April to see it. Anyways, if you're new, make sure to subscribe and comment down below. And also, no matter all the copyright belongs to Oversimplified. And hopefully you had a good day. And remember to stay inside and wash your hands and stay safe for the coronavirus. Anyways, goodbye.